Welcome all of you. In this lecture, we can summarize the module load flow analysis or our third module. What all are the main concepts in this load flow analysis or the frequently asked questions in university exams, short answer as well as the essay type questions. Okay. So I hope you might have gone through all the lectures in load flow analysis and you have uh, main, um, worked out certain problems on it. So now let's come back to this um, basic concept or summary of this load flow analysis module. So the main short answer type questions that could be asked for university exam are the first thing is we have seen what all are the basic concepts of bus. So the frequently asked question is classify types or uh, what are the types of buses in power system or classify buses in a power system or how the buses are classified in a power system like that okay and while answering uh, this short answer question you should you should not skip these points first thing is you have to say that there are three buses then on what all basis these buses are classified okay based on the parameters specified and first of all you have to say which are which are the four parameters associated with a bus then uh, you write uh, which all two parameters are specified for a particular bus like that in that way you need to answer and also if uh, it is asked for more marks then you can include the concept of slack bus also that is why slack bus is needed again that is yet another short answer question uh, what is the significance of a slack bus or uh, what, why do we need a slack bus that can be asked as a short answer question and we have discussed its answer as well that is it is mainly to account the transmission loss in a power system this is a frequently asked question then coming um, next is the admittance metrics the basic concept of uh, admittance metrics so in that case it is usually an essay question calculation of bus admittance metrics or why bus it can be it can it can it can be asked as an essay question actually um, it's actually a problem and also the short answer from that point is what is the, what are the significance of admittance metrics or which all are the informations that you can get from an admittance metrics so that also we have discussed that is uh, the diagonal elements will represent the self admittance of a particular bus of diagonal elements will represent the mutual admittance or uh, um, mutual admittance of a particular bus then uh, if uh, any value is zero then it represents there is no connection between two particular bus and this is mainly used for fault calculations low flow analysis like that okay so that is the significance of uh, y bus and calculation of bus admittance matrix is equally important which can be a sure essay question and uh, if you are asked an essay question like that please do not skip any steps because uh, it is very very easy problem because we can uh, without any steps itself we can write a particular vibus if you are that much talented and uh, no problem no issue but uh, if it is asked for a 10 marks or a 12 marks or above 5 marks you are recommend it is strongly recommended to uh, write necessary steps in that particular case okay then another thing uh, which you should be very much careful is uh, you have to double check the question whether the given values are admittance or impedance because if it is impedance first you convert that impedance to admittance and then proceed okay so that was about vibus the next is load flow analysis and we have seen different methods gositel method newton raphson method decoupled load flow method and fast decoupled load flow method of this the usually asked a question is the problem solving using gositel method which is usually asked and uh, by in that particular case also uh, only first iteration until till first iteration has been asked as of now in the university exams so while uh, answering the gozidal method you should be much careful in using calculators very much careful in doing calculations as well uh, because uh, minute errors can cause uh, major error in the final answer in gozidal method and there also uh, please do follow the steps because even if your answer gets strong, if your steps are correct, you can, uh, what do you call, you can get some marks. You will not lose the entire marks in that particular case, okay. So that was ghost Cetal method. And in the ghost Cetal method also, we have seen different cases. What is the case uh, when we are considering load bus alone? What is the case when generator bus also comes into picture? 
when generator is also included you have you are supposed to calculate the reactive power and have to check this reactive power is between two particular limits if the limit is satisfied you can proceed and if the limit is not satisfied you have to treat that particular buses load bus and then you need to proceed isn't it so that was a case associated with Gauss serial method and while uh, doing problems in Gauss serial method again you should be you should double check whether uh, the given values are in per units then uh, whether the given values active power or reactive power has sufficient polarity given whether it is positive or negative given like that all those things you have to double check and you have to double ensure and the next is the flowchart of Gauss serial method and if you are thorough with the problem solving using Gauss-Riddle method, it is easy for you to draw the flowchart. And uh, in the lecture also, I have uh, discussed in detail how to uh, obtain a flowchart of Gauss-Riddle method. And once you complete the flowchart, the different steps in a flowchart, if you write in sentence form, that becomes your algorithm or the different steps associated with Gauss-Riddle method. The next was Newton-Raphson method. We have seen the mathematical background of Newton-Raphson method and also problem solving using Newton-Raphson method. Uh, usually problems or numericals in Newton-Raphson method is not asked in the university as of now. But even then, uh, in the lecture, there was, a, uh, there was a lecture detailing the numericals and um, uh, it will be easy if you can uh, do it compared to the Gauss-Seidel method. Still, uh, you at least go through the mathematical background of newton raphson method decoupled load flow method and fast decoupled load flow method and in this case the another frequently or important short answer question is comparison of all these four methods whether which of them is uh, much more accurate which requires more memory uh, which requires more time for calculation and uh, how um, how is the convergence whether it is quadratic or linear like that Comparison of the different methods as of load flow analysis can be asked as a short answer question. And uh, these are the uh, main topics coming under uh, load flow analysis module. And if you are thorough with uh, Gauss-Seidel method and the mathematical background of Newton-Raphson method and uh, the bus admittance metrics, you can score good marks from this module. So uh, based on the lectures, you may please go through the lectures and work out the problems carefully and if you find any difficulty or any doubt in the lectures or if you go get any other question and you are not able to solve it uh, please feel free to contact me thank you